let's get straight into it. You had a lot of questions via Instagram and as promised, I'm going to answer them. Planning a move to France too. I just don't know how quickly I can. How did you not get held back by logistics or family burdens? How did you just go for it? Did you tell people or organize it quietly and then announce? Um, excited about your, your move to France. Very, very excited for you. I found it terrifying, but it was a question of, I guess, yeah, it was something that my hairdresser actually said really eloquently that, that is so true. He said, if you, if you try something, if there's something that you want to try and you try and you fail, it doesn't work, you'll forget about it very quickly. You'll move on with your life. If you never try, then you have to live with that regret until you die which yes sounds very existential um but that that's what it that's what it came down to i was like i'd been for a month and i thought life isn't this isn't a dress rehearsal if i don't try this if i don't really go for this i know i'm always going to regret it so i just i just did it and let myself go and that is <laughs> that's the way it's going um every single every single day my family is very, very small and I don't have children, so I think that makes a big difference. But they were very opinionated about it. They had a lot of questions, um, but we're still in that phase of this is temporary, I'm gonna come back. It's just a phase that Jess is going through. It's just something that she has to get out of her system. Uh, if I stay long-term, long-term, it might, it might be a little bit different, but Honestly, the, the biggest piece of advice that I would give you is to live your life for you, not for other people. I think you have to consider what they have to say, you have to consider their feelings, but ultimately this is your life. And if you have dreams, aspirations, things that you want to do, if you don't try, you won't succeed at, at all of them, you know, that, then that's okay, that's fine. But if you don't at least try, you're always going to um, always going to live with the with the regret. I didn't organise things quietly as such. I'm very I'll yeah I'm, I'll just say what I'm thinking when when I'm thinking it with um, with my family. It's them that have the much more realistic logic <laughs> logical questions, and I'll be like, oh I just I don't really know. I'm going to maybe figure that out, or it's not a big deal, and I I play things down so that they they seem really small when they're actually. A, a massive deal but no I communicated openly with them I think it's again it's a case of what what works best for you and what gives you more confidence so if you know that someone's going to tear down your dreams and aspirations don't tell them they are not they are not your people um, keep it secret keep it safe and yeah but above all follow what it is that, that you're wanting you're wanting to do 100% heart led. How do I find balance and make sensible decisions? <laughs> I'm not the right person to ask. I'm not the right person to ask. I'm the person that my friends come to when they want to do something ridiculous and they just need someone to believe in them that it's possible. So whatever it is that, <laughs> that your heart's telling you to do, I would tell you to, to do that. I don't believe in living a sensible life. I think a life full of mistakes and intuitive and heartless decisions is far more interesting, far more entertaining and is what we are all designed to live. And I think it's culture and society that tries to get us to live a very different hamster wheel kind of life that is sensible. Uh, I tried that, it wasn't much fun, it's not for me. If it's not for you either, don't do it. Follow your heart. At least then you're living from the inside out as opposed to from the outside. What's your favorite thing about living in Paris? Okay, so my favorite thing about 
living in Paris is that I'm surrounded by beauty every single day. Um, the, the people, the life, the food, the clothes, the buildings, the museums, the art, the gardens, just everything. I am, I walk out of my, my front door in the morning and it's just, it's constant beauty everywhere. And I love beautiful things. I love beauty. It's a real balm for my soul as a, as a creative as well. And I love that I can just go on a little walk around the block and I'm surrounded by what I consider to be the most, you know, the most beautiful city in the world. So I love having all of that beauty on my doorstep. I find it a real, a real balm. I find it really soothing and really inspiring on a day-to-day -day basis as well. I love your pictures, so pretty. Thank you. Do you edit with an app? Yes, so I, I take my photos sometimes on iPhone, I have the iPhone 13, and then I shoot mainly on the X-T4, the Fujifilm that I'm using now, and then I edit in Lightroom Mobile. I have my own presets, my own like filters that I've um, built up over, over the years, but I really love the Lightroom Mobile app for editing. Uh, VSCO is is really great as well, but I tend to use the Adobe Lightroom one more because I've got a little bit more control over the uh, the colours and the, the yeah the details. I find that that to, that app to have the edge. Do you miss countryside life? I I I don't miss my day to day life from back home. I miss the quiet of the countryside so sometimes when and I've had you know I've had to have the windows open quite a lot in the summer because it's been so hot when I can just hear the road outside my apartment I will miss the quiet I'll miss hearing the birds and all yeah all that there's just like a, a lightness and a space in the sounds that you hear in the countryside I miss that um, but I, I, I do ask myself on a daily basis, do you want to go home? And the answer is always no. So I can't miss it that much. Though I don't think that I will live in a city all the time, forever. I still very much feel that that countryside life is part of who, who I am. And I miss horse riding as well. I don't miss, I haven't missed the competing at all but I have really missed horse riding and I miss Teddy a lot and we FaceTime all the time. <laughs> um, but yeah, I do, I miss, I miss that aspect of um, a countryside life for sure. Your life doesn't follow the simple quiet life of old. Do you feel this is a way of life you've left behind? No, I don't. I, I have, do you know, I read a really interesting Substack piece recently and it's about radical slow living and I'll share a link to it for you. I thought, I haven't read anything quite like it, it's so, so interesting and it's about embracing slow living in your own way and the author talks about how she wants to embrace slow living but she can't relate to the whole, you know, staying at home, alone in the cottage, baking bread, that really traditional slow living aesthetic that we're all used to seeing. She likes going to concerts and she likes mosh pits and all that kind of stuff. And it's about how she can make space for more of, more of that in her life while still slowing down. And I'm a real believer in that. Like I really champion individuality and making something your own. And for me, slow living, minimalism, they are all about identifying what your personal core values are, what matters to you in your life, not judging that. That can be absolutely anything that you want it to be, forget what anyone else thinks, and keeping those very, very close and building your life around those and letting go of the rest. So I think a slow life should look and feel different for all of us. And I think slow living is possible in a city. Um, I, you know, I keep um, routines 
like I go to the same I go to the same park every day I do the same the same walks every day I say no to things I'm exercising boundaries so that I can keep what matters to me very very sacred and I'm not getting caught up in that very fast paced city life it's probably a little bit harder to do in a city because it's naturally more more fast paced but it is definitely possible and in no way do I feel like I've left any of those values or, or that way of life behind. I still feel like exactly the same person, I just have a different backdrop to my life. How are your lovely teeth so white? Thank you. I, ooh, I whiten them. So I had, uh, I had braces and then I have like uh, top and bottom retainers and I get a whitener from the dentist. I think it's called Night White, I think it's a Philips one. Um, and I put that in the little little trays and then pop it in and just leave it in for, for a couple of hours. Um, and I maybe do that for like one week every every six months. So that's the, uh, that's the, the teeth routine. Why did you and your husband split up? Okay. Uh, I did say, don't hold back. So, out of respect for him, I'm not gonna go into detail because it doesn't feel, doesn't feel fair. And my marriage was always the thing that I was most proud of. And I spent a lot of time thinking about it over, over the summer and I've stopped thinking about it as a failure. I don't talk about it with that kind of language anymore. I use the term that it didn't survive, but it was a very, it was a good, it was a very, very good marriage. And like I said, out of respect, our marriage was built, we always said it was built on two things. It was built on respect and laughter. And we had great times together. We had a great marriage. We went on so many great adventures together. But it didn't, it didn't survive. What I will say is that it was my decision and nothing happened on his part. It was 100% my decision. I was the one who ended it and I was the one who left, which is why I left the house. That, that we were living in. But yeah, out, out of respect for him, I'm not gonna go into details about that because it just doesn't feel, doesn't feel fair. And I'm sure that you'll, you'll understand that. Tips for loneliness. Fellow long-term singleton, knowing life is what you make it, still hard though. Okay, so I always, in terms of loneliness, I, I talk a lot about how, I felt my loneliest when I've been surrounded by lots and lots of people. So I don't necessarily think it's about not having people physically to, to connect with. And I think the number one priority if you're feeling loneliness is to reconnect to yourself and to do that through self-care. Things like journaling, like I said figuring out what your values are, building a life around those, figuring out what you want out of life, what makes you happy, and leaning into those things on your own. In terms of like bouts of loneliness, like you know, nights or days or just periods when it sets in and you, you, you're really, really feeling it, my advice is to reach out to friends and family who you can trust to sit with you in it, as opposed to just trying to fix you or telling you telling you what to do. I think if you can pick up the phone or just send a text message to someone who will be empathetic towards you, that can help book it. It's like being here on my, I mean, a lot of my friendships were long distance anyway, but now, you know, 99% of them are, are long distance, but we still, we still keep in touch. We still keep the connections through consistency and, and hard work. And I think that is, that's really, really worth it because then when you are feeling lonely, you have people to, to reach out to. 
how do you use the artist way in your day-to-day -day life? So for anyone who doesn't know, The Artist Way is a 12-week like creative course. It's a really famous book written by Julia Cameron. I'll leave a link to it in the description. It's incredible. I worked through it years ago. In terms of bringing it into my everyday life, it talks a lot in there about childhood trauma and self-reflection and self-care and self-love. And I think I try and bring those aspects into my life every single day through tiny routines. So I have a morning routine that is built around self-care with exercise, meditation, journaling. I don't do the three pages every single morning anymore. I journal maybe half a page in my journal, but I do do that every single day. That is a an ingrained habit that I will never ever let go of. Uh, the artist dates as well I have recently brought back into my life since being here and thinking about what I want my life to look and feel like here in Paris. Uh, I have those scheduled into my diary every single week so that they take priority and I think if we schedule something it you know it tends to actually happen because then if someone asks you to do something that might mean you don't do it, you say no, because you check your, giant, you check your diary and that thing's, that thing's already in there, so it always takes priority. But I do recommend that book to anyone who wants to explore their creativity. It's, it's just, yeah, it's, it's an absolute classic. It's amazing. You should definitely, definitely give it a try. How long will you stay in this apartment and would love to see a capsule wardrobe vlog again? Okay, this apartment that I'm staying in is a sublet. I was It was supposed to be until the end of August and then it got extended and now it's definitely going to end at the end of September, early October. So I need to find a new place to live, which is very exciting. Now I'm through the feeling terrified side of it um, because finding a place to live in Paris is notoriously very, very difficult. I don't speak the language. I'm self-employed. <laughs> yeah, I'm not on the I'm not on the best uh, on the best foot with that. But once I got through that, I got really excited and realised that you know my time here is it's, it's time. It's time for it to to come to an end. It's time to to see what next. I, what's next I definitely don't want to go home so I am now looking for a new place to live I think on like a, a six month lease I think I don't know I have issues around the whole commitment thing we'll see um, we'll just see what what I can find but I'm hoping for something a little bit bigger it would be really really nice and hopefully where I can have like a capsule wardrobe rail and I can do more of that style of um, video for you again. So you will be seeing a lot more, a lot more of that. I'm so excited to read your novel. When will it be out? Oh, that makes me feel so excited. Uh, it's gonna be a while. <laughs> I haven't, you know, I haven't even finished the, um, the first draft yet, but I am in a very good, writing routine right now which is new but very very exciting and I'm gonna write about my writing routine and routines in um, in general on Substack very very soon so I will I will be sharing that with you because I've learned a lot recently about writing routines um, but yeah it's it's happening so it is being written I I think it's okay to be a slow creator i think it's okay to be a slow writer I, i've never had aspirations of writing a book a year like a lot of my like a lot like a lot of my friends have i'm fine with a you know my dream is a book every three to to four years and enough was written in a very very short amount of time i had six months to write the first draft of it and it was good to have a deadline it really you know, got my ass in gear and made sure that it got written. But I want this to be different. I want to take my time with this novel. I want to let it let it flow, let it grow in in more 
more space and I'm enjoying that, that process. I also don't want to give up everything else that I do, like blogging and writing on Substack, which I would have to do if I wanted to write it in the same way that Enough was written. So the plan, the plan this year, the goal was just to start it this year. That's happened, it's underway. I plan to finish it next year, so it will probably come out at the end of next year, maybe even the year, the year after. Um, but thank you for your excitement, that, that makes me feel really, really happy. Have you made friends in Paris? Do you ever feel lonely there? I have made friends in Paris. I feel like I've made a lot of friends in Paris. I feel making friends, I need to write about this soon, but I feel like making new friends is very similar to dating. Like you have the first, you have the first meet where you kind of get in, getting an idea for a person, deciding if you want to see them again. And then you kind of half commit to one another and then cracks start to show. And it's like, oh, are we, are we a good fit? Are we not? You know, all connections are a living, breathing thing, I think, and they're very, very difficult to get off the ground in the beginning unless both of you are committed to doing so. Um, but I have, I have made friends in Paris. I've met loads of new people in Paris, but I am, yeah, I'm starting to consider a few, a few people here actual friends, which feels really, really nice. I do get lonely sometimes, but in all honesty, I don't feel as lonely here as what I used to back home. So I'm a lot less lonely here than I, than I was back home. Do you deal with anxiety? I love this question. I, yeah, anxiety, like, I get anxiety a lot. I think of it as, you know, heart racing. It's, for me, anxiety shows up um, very physically. So I'll, I'll get very, very sweaty. My heart will race, my breathing will, will change. And I have this general overwhelming feeling of impending doom. Like bad things are going to happen. Bad things are coming. For example, knowing that I have to find a new place to live in a foreign country where I'm alone and don't speak the language and then yeah, like <laughs> it all it all sets off to the point where I don't feel like I can do anything. I feel very paralyzed by that anxiety. I want to close the doors, I want to get under the duvet, I want to hide away, I don't want to see anyone and just cocoon myself. And the way that I deal with anxiety, so the way that I move through it is to welcome it, welcome it in, to try not to push it away, to remind myself that it's perfectly understandable to feel anxious about stuff, that it's okay to embrace it and that feelings don't last. So I think scientifically feelings last for, it's something ridiculous like 90 seconds. If we just allow ourselves to feel the thing, if it's a positive emotion, we don't mind doing that. We, we're more than happy to let those feelings like just rush through us. But when it's a negative feeling, we try and block it, we try and distract ourselves from it, and we need to learn to embrace all, all feelings. Because the truth is, you can't feel extreme joy unless you can feel the opposite end of, of the spectrum. So we are designed to literally be on a, a roller coaster to feel extreme highs and extreme lows and everything in between. Anxiety is no exception. So I welcome it in. So I, I plan worst case scenario and I think, okay, fine, I'm feeling really anxious, let's go, let's feel it. And I I give myself space for, for it to happen, but I do it in a way that I love myself through it too. So self-care, self-love is very, very important. And I try to use that compassionate voice constantly to reassure myself, ask myself what it is that I need to validate the feelings that I'm having and 
tell myself that it's okay to take my foot off the gas a little bit, that I'm doing a lot better than what I think, everything's gonna be okay because everything has been okay, and just let's take a breather, let's relax, let's get a good night's sleep, let's have a good meal, let's drink some water, kind of tend to myself like, like you would a child. And that always makes me feel a lot, lot better. When I'm feeling anxiety in terms of overwhelm, I think the most important thing to do is to take as much off your schedule as possible, to identify the should do's and the must do's, know the difference, and even though those should do's feel like they're so important and everything has to get done, they really, really don't. So I ask myself, well, what would happen? What would really happen like if I didn't do that thing? And unless it's something catastrophic, I don't do it, I give myself a breather, I focus on the things that have to be done, create some space, and it passes, I start to feel better, all is uh, all is right with the world again, until it all comes back around again, which is just part, which is just, you know, part of the process, and we have to learn to um, live alongside fear, I think, because I don't think it ever, it ever really goes away. Did you give up your home in the UK? Also, hi, fellow writer, your words are a breath of crisp air. Oh, thank you very much, hello. Uh, no, I didn't give up my home in the UK because I uh, have few issues around commitment <laughs> and moving abroad, it was a massive, massive thing and I wanted to dip my toe in and then, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, you know, kind of dance around with it uh, a little bit, do it intuitively and take my time and I feel very, very lucky that I was given the choice as to whether I wanted to keep my home and sublet it so that all the costs of it are covered or give it up completely like I had I had the choice so I chose to keep it for now so if I do change my mind if I do want to go back I have I have my base I still have all you know my, my beautiful home things um, yeah it's all there waiting for me if I want to want to go back so for now it just feels like this this transition transition period but no I didn't I didn't give give my home up and I feel really lucky that I didn't have to. How do you take care of your beautiful hair? Thank you very much. Uh, it's not mine. <laughs> Most of it isn't. I have hair extensions in. Um, I've always had very thin hair, like biologically, my mom has thin hair. It's just the way, the way that it is. I got it to a point where it was it was really nice and thick, the thickest it was ever gonna be and quite, quite long. And then when I had a really tough time with my mental health, a lot of my hair fell out. It thinned really, really badly. I was struggling with nutrition during that time as well. And I decided that I wanted to do something that was gonna make me feel better about myself, gonna give me a bit of a confidence boost. So I went to see Laurent, my hairdresser, and he did an incredible hair extensions for me. And I did it as a, oh, I'm just gonna try it until, you know, my hair starts growing back and gets longer. Yeah, that's, that's not happened. I'm over a year now uh, and it's, um, yeah, I love, I love, love, love having, having my hair extensions. It definitely does give me a lot more confidence in terms of looking after it personally i think the best thing that you can do to look after your hair is to eat well something that i can struggle with a lot but i try and eat a lot of protein and then other than that it's very very simple i use fragrance free shampoo conditioner and i use a hair oil as well but other than that i don't i don't do anything with it at all but like I said the majority of it isn't mine so I don't feel like I can take any credit for it. Any tips for exploring developing photography style? I love yours. Thank you very very much. Um, yeah this is something that I'm really passionate about, something that I, I love so I totally get where you're coming from in terms of wanting to develop that. 
One of the best tips that I was given was in a course that I did with James and Joe Melia, who I will leave a link to because their photography course is incredible. It was their Lost in the Light course that I did. And they have this exercise where you find 10 photos on Pinterest or find them on Instagram, save them to a Pinterest board. You find 10 photos that make you feel something and you can only have 10. So you start with loads and then you whittle it down to 10. And then you have to look at these pictures and think about what they have in common, whether it be the color, the light, the subject, and what it is that they make you feel, like why it is that you, that you love them. That is the best tip that I was ever given because then you can think about how to create your own version of photos like like that and that all comes from experimentation practice trying things failing things but being committed to to learning my favorite go-to's in terms of photography tips are james and joe melia i love peter mckinnon and i love sorel Amore as well she did her advanced selfie course is really 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 good um, but I'll leave a link to to those three for you in case you want me to dive in. Loving your workshops on Substack, will you be doing more? That makes me feel really really happy. I love doing the the workshops on Substack. If you don't already know on Substack I do live events usually once a month. My most recent one was a summer creative writing class that we did. I've done a personal style workshop on there as well. Journaling workshops, all, all different stuff. Yes, I'm definitely planning to continue them. If you have any suggestions, leave them in the comments or get in touch with me. I'm thinking about maybe doing an interiors one next, maybe like uncovering and discovering your personal interior style because now that I'm looking for my own place here in Paris, yeah, the interior lover in me is she's starting to reawaken, like I'm looking in interior shops again and stuff like that. So I think maybe that might be the next one but yeah the, the journaling ones and all that stuff will 100 percent continue and i'm really really pleased to hear that you are enjoying them and if you don't know about them you want to find out more i'll leave a link in the description thank you for all the questions hopefully you've enjoyed hearing the answers i've added some sort of value um yeah Thank you so much for watching. As always, I love doing a QA. I'm always curious to hear the questions that like you that you have. And I always try and answer the ones that I think will help. Um, so hopefully I have done that. Hope you have a really, really great week and I will see you soon.